The Curse of the Crying Boy. Today's topic that we're looking at is of a painting that got very famous and has caused some speculation of being cursed. Now why is that? Well we're going to break down this whole case and the history behind the painting and find out why. So to start off, this painting was part of a series of paintings by an artist called Giovanni Bragolino and they were finished in the 1950s. Now there is a lot of speculation of where this artist came from and what his actual name is. Some say the artist is from Italy and his actual name was Bruno Amado, but his artist name went under the name Giovanni Bragolino. Some even speculate the artist was from France or Spain, however most sources point towards the origins of Italy. It's safe to say with all the speculations that this artist did originate somewhere in Europe. For today's video purposes, we'll say that they originated in Italy because most sources say that, so that seems to be the most reliable outlet. So, the image in these sets depict young children with tears streaming down their eyes. The children were believed to be orphans during World War II, and the paintings were supposed to be a reminder of what these young children were going through at the time while they're separated from their family. Despite all of this, the paintings grew very popular, with prints later sold and widespread to other neighbouring countries. Now it might seem strange having a crying child up on your wall, or even giving it as a gift to somebody interested in art, however it was successful and had over 50,000 reprints sold in the United Kingdom alone. However, one particular painting out of the 60 plus types in the set has caused debate. The best known painting being The Crying Boy, his eyes being a sad reflection of his soul. This debate ongoing is that the painting is cursed, and these claims began to widespread around Britain during the 80s. Now during the 80s, there had been many house fires that were reported, where everything had been burnt in their home, all except the painting of the crying boy, completely salvaged. This leads owners of the painting to speculate evil, especially when the stories began spreading and many experienced similar house fires where their personal copy of this painting hadn't been burned along with everything else. Now the most popular fire account this stems from is a published newspaper by The Sun on September the 4th, 1985. The newspaper discussed a couple, Ron and May Hill, where their house burnt down due to a fire, to a chip pan. Everything around the couple was charred and ruined except their painting of the crying boy. The couple then blamed the fire on the painting itself. A firefighter, Alan Wilkinson, had even mentioned he heard of multiple accounts of this happening recently where the painting was the only object to survive in the fire. The very next day, the son followed up their story, saying they had hundreds of calls from terrified readers, with many telling personal stories to the news outlet. We'll have a read of some of these accounts now, but remember there's no satisfactory evidence these are all claims from readers of the newspaper during the 80s. A woman in Surrey lost her house at a fire six months after buying the painting. Two sisters in Kilburn had fires in their homes after buying a copy of the painting. One sister even claimed to have seen the painting swaying backwards and forwards on the wall. A concerned woman on the Isle of Wight attempted to burn her painting without success and then went on to suffer a run of bad luck. A gentleman in Nottingham who possessed a print of the painting lost his home and his family were injured. A pizza parlour in Norfolk was destroyed including every painting on its walls except for the crying boy. That is a lot of claims. The son eventually made another story offering to take the cursed paintings off the hands of the owners, where their officers received over 2,000 copies. They were eventually burned in a gigantic bonfire, which I find very ironic. 
but how else would you destroy a paintings? Eventually the story had died down and a few people today have even admitted to still owning a copy of the painting for many years but have had them locked away somewhere in an attic for example. But they, but they have that feeling of dread that something bad might still happen to them. Some believe it's just a normal paintings and the fires were caused due to carelessness when cooking or some type of electrical fault with appliances. In modern day, there's too many speculations and origins to count on and it appears that there isn't any solid evidence for a lot of the claims. Otherwise, news outlets would be given their information with certainty rather than each person having something unique and spooky to say and this is what I've been coming across in my research. A lot of the statements aren't really said with certainty because of course, they don't know. Now I'll tell you some of the speculations of the boy who was actually painted in the picture. They range from a lot of differences. Some believe the artist painted a gypsy child and the family of that child cursed the artist for painting their son, which may explain why any of the prints of the painting is causing malice. Some other people say that wherever this child went, fires started, so he's known for just running away from fear. Now this really resembles number 11 in Stranger Things, it just reminds me of season 1, she has telekinesis and anybody that sees her using these abilities want to call the authorities and get the government to assess what's going on and of course this girl is going to run away because she's terrified nobody else is like her which is what is really reminding me of this boy fires start wherever he goes and some people even say the child was an orphan and the artist saw him alone and decided to take care of him to where he painted the child in his art studio which later burnt down to where the child was never seen again so that also goes back with that speculation that this kid causes fires so nobody knows for sure but what I am sure of is that if you research this yourself you will just see more wild claims of the origins of the child. Over the years, many people have been trying to debunk this painting. Public to YouTube, there is a video documented of an attempt to burn a painting. Published by the BBC Radio 4, scientists with the approval of the fire services had a controlled fire of a print of the crying boy. I'm going to play that video for you now and we'll discuss it afterwards. Punt, Tracy got a little something for you. One I looked into myself back in the 80s. We called it the curse of the crying boy. I want you to reopen the case. There was only one thing left to do. Quiz some boffins about the baffling curse top pick. Or rather, ask some scientists to test the painting in a fire. Uh, in order to enhance the scientific credibility of this test, we're actually filming this. It's quite a big flame. The flame is now about two feet high. This is slowly inching towards the figure. Just, just the lapel of his jacket has uh, disappeared now. There's a hole in the bottom right-hand corner of the painting, but the flames don't appear to be uh, spreading across. Well, you'd have to say that has not caught fire. And it's definitely dying down now. In fact, it's now time to put the sausages on. The painting had a hole in it from where the fire had touched it, but the flames hadn't spread. But you'd have to say that fire's pretty much going out. Martin, though, was a man of science and not given to superstition. For him, the unvarnished truth might be in the varnish. I'm a bit surprised. I think it's probably been coated in something which is resisting the... Uh resisting the flames, whether it's actually some sort of fire retardant coating they put on the picture, or whether it's just some other coating which happens to have fire retardant properties. As I closed the casebook, one partially charred crying boy portrait sat forlornly outside on the porch. I'm not taking any chances. Would you? 
So in that video, we saw a painting of the crying boy catch light in the camera's bottom right corner. The flame was two feet tall and stopped just before it reached the crying boy. The scientists believe there is some sort of fire resistant varnish coated on the painting that is protecting it. If that is the case, the varnish has not been coated evenly or everywhere as the fire was able to burn and make a hole in the corner of the painting. I feel like the scientist's sample was way too small and that they should have tried to light the other corner of the painting or even blowtorch the centre of the painting to back up their claims of varnish. Now understandably, fire retardant materials may not be 100% protected, but for the mere process of seeing some sort of restriction or delay, that would help us to truly see if there was some sort of varnish protecting the painting. But it's still very interesting and it definitely could explain why the persona of the crime boy was not burnt. Other ways to explain why these paintings may have been saved in a fire was because many of these copies were hung up by a rope or string, so perhaps a rope had been the first thing to burn in the fire and it was knocked down onto the floor. Now because the item was on the floor, it was saved from the flames every single time. But that still doesn't explain why it was the only thing salvaged. And I also feel like in my research, this is such an important detail. If there was rope behind all of these copies, why is that not talked about more? Nobody seems to be using that as an argument, and I haven't really seen the manufacturers comment or even heard of the origins of the manufacturers. Because this isn't even a British painting in the first place, it's come somewhere from Europe. But that also doesn't mean that the paintings weren't printed in Britain. Anybody could print a painting, they just need the image. I also feel like when we've got statements from people that own the paintings, it's really important to know where was the painting during and after the fire. Because each person's situation is going to differ to why it was saved. Also, I just wanted to point some attention to some of the news articles that I read. One article a user actually shared with us, um, one of their personal experiences as a child, they said that their grandparents actually had a painting on the parlour wall, I believe, and every time they came to visit, all of their attention was on that painting, and that's perhaps because this boy was a similar age to the boy in the picture, so you kind of grow that connection because they're a similar age. He said that he always found himself staring at it, and he even felt like he should give the boy in the painting a name. Eventually though, the, the grandparents' house set on fire. Now, this painting was in a parlour or a living room, and it was their kitchen that set on fire. So the grandparents actually ordered a skip and threw away anything that couldn't be saved, basically, and the grandparents even grabbed the portrait from the living room, having knowing the history behind it, and threw that in the skip as well. And the person writing the news article, who was a child, can remember himself being confused and sad, like, why would you throw that painting away? It was a big part of my childhood, I gave it a name, and now it's gone. As this writer has grown up and published his article, he can understand now why his grandparents got rid of that painting. And many other people even share their own personal experiences of this painting, seeing it on a wall as a child, and it being a very core memory for them. So depending on your background and actually being brought up around this painting, your feelings towards it might actually be different. It might You might not say it's cursed at all, or you might just remember it as being a very attracting painting and suddenly it was just out of your life. And was that for a good reason? A lot of people growing up seem to say, yes, that was for the best reason. So all of these websites, I am going to link in the description because they're very interesting. I will put the most reliable source at the top for you guys to read um, if you want to. Some sources don't say much, but each one is interesting in its own way. 
So, this was the case of the cursed painting of the crying boy. Please let me know if you believe the origins of this painting, or let me know if you're a skeptic and believe in the scientists. I'm genuinely interested. Me personally, I'm on both fences. I have a 50-50 feeling. It is creepy to me, yet science hasn't answered all of my questions. So due to that, I can't really rely on science all the way, which leads me into the possibility of it being a truly cursed painting. Thank you very much for watching, and we are going to be covering more cursed objects and paintings in the future. This is going to be a brand new series that we're kickstarting on Horror O'Clock. I'll see you in the next one. Stay spooky.